My name is Karen Boschman. I'm a research scientist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. Today I'm talking about reducing methane emissions from cattle, and this is an abbreviated version of the presentation I gave at, in, at the methane conference here in Lincoln, Nebraska. So methane emissions, we know that methane is a potent greenhouse gas, so it contributes to global warming, which is a problem. And for producers, methane is a loss of energy from the feed, so our objective then is to reduce methane emissions both from an environmental standpoint and to improve efficiency of production. So in terms of lowering methane emissions, as we produce food for human consumption, we are never going to completely eliminate methane emissions. So the question then is, can we do it more efficiently? So can we reduce methane emissions per pound of beef? To do this then, we need to both decrease methane emissions that are, methane is produced in the rumen of animals during the normal process of feed digestion. And also, um, we need to increase the pounds of beef produced, so through animal performance. So there have been a number of study, a number of studies conducted to look at the methane emission per pound of beef and how this has changed today versus 30 years ago. We recently did a study in Canada, but there's been studies done in the US and Australia that have shown that over a 30 year period, we have reduced the carbon footprint of beef, primarily through the reduction of methane, by about 15%. So 5% reduction every decade. That's a very good news story. And most of those improvements were just simply due to improvements in production efficiency. So better reproductive performance, larger, uh, heavier calves being weaned, uh, heavier calves being marketed. So in addition to increasing animal performance, there are, always, there are also opportunities to lower methane production from the rumen. So with beef then, this is a challenge because when we look at what we're feeding the beef animal throughout the production cycle from birth to plate, about 80% of the feed consumed by the animals is forage, only 20% grain. So, we, the, so there's a bit of a paradox here. Um, on one hand, we're using uh, feed, forage, and byproducts that don't, consume, that don't compete directly with consumers or other livestock, but at, on the other hand, we have high emissions. So uh, it's very challenging then to reduce methane emissions from grazing animals in particular. So a lot of different uh, strategies have been done, um, over, have been looked at over the years, and I just summarized some of these on this slide. So because we're looking at a forage-based system, we need to improve uh, emissions from forage. So legumes, for example, uh, are lower in methane production than our grasses. Uh, the most important thing is forage quality. We need to have better quality forages, better ma grazing management. In an animal in confinement where we have the opportunity to uh, formulate the diet and include additives, there's opportunity to add fat to a diet. For example, the fat of a, a popular fat source in beef diets would be distiller's grains. And there's a couple of new experimental additives that show a lot of promise. For example, a compound called 3-nitrooxypropanol. Uh, this is a synthetic compound, but in beef work that has been recently published, we have found a 25 to 30 percent reduction in methane emission in backgrounding cattle, as well as a 10 percent improvement in feed in gain to feed ratio. So very promising for the future. Also, possibility of uh, feeding nitrate. Nitrate is a source of non-protein nitrogen. This can be added to the diet as a, a nutritional um, substitute for urea. It also uh, decreases methane emission. And there's a lot of other experimental compounds in development. So in terms of the way forward, in terms of reducing methane emissions from cattle, we have to think about, about uh, lowering methane emission, but also being more efficient in terms of producing meat. So it's simply maximizing production efficiency in cattle. 
In terms of lowering methane, there's opportunities through diets and additives, and we're going to see a lot more of this in the future. There's also the possibility of animal selection, which I didn't talk about here, but these uh, new strategies are coming down the pipeline, and we're going to hear a lot more about this in the future. So with that, thank you very much.